Okay, before we get into the airplane, let's take a look at how we conduct a normal takeoff and climb in the Piper Warrior. For normal takeoffs, we use 10 degrees of flaps as noted here at the top of the Flight Standards Manual graphic. The normal takeoff procedure will actually begin just prior to taxiing across the runway holding position markings. If departing from a non-towered airport, you would have announced your intentions on the common traffic advisory frequency. If taking off from a towered airport, you would have received your takeoff clearance or perhaps a lineup and wait instruction. In either case, prior to entering the runway, it is imperative that the approach area be checked to ensure there are no other aircraft on the approach that could create a conflict. As the aircraft is positioned onto the runway, the before takeoff line items should be completed using the following established flow pattern. This will ensure that the final takeoff items are completed in a prompt and efficient manner without forgetting anything. The line item check ends with a runway alignment check in which the magnetic compass heading and heading indicator agree with the runway's magnetic direction, as indicated by the runway number. The aircraft should be taxied into position so that the nose wheel is on the runway centerline. Allow the aircraft to roll a few feet once aligned to ensure the nose wheel is straight. Unless an immediate takeoff is warranted, the aircraft should be brought to a stop. Aileron should be placed and held in the appropriate position for any crosswinds. The takeoff roll begins by ensuring that your feet are not inadvertently applying brake pressure. Heels on the ground. The throttle is smoothly advanced to full power by moving the lever all the way to the forward stop. Time from idle to full throttle is generally about 3 to 4 seconds. It should be noted that due to aerodynamic forces, the aircraft will have a pronounced yaw to the left during the takeoff roll. The limited rudder authority at the start of the takeoff will require a positive application of right rudder that will diminish as the airspeed builds and rudder authority improves. It is imperative that the runway centerline be tracked throughout the takeoff roll by timely application of rudder. In general, the runway centerline should remain between the two main landing gear at all times. As full power is applied, the pilot should verify that the engine is producing the proper static RPM by verifying the indicated RPM is between 2330 and 2430. This assumes sea level conditions at ISA. The callout power set is then made. These engine limitations are specified in the type certificate data sheet for the PA28161 as shown here. Any indications that the engine is not functioning normally is caused to terminate the takeoff and investigate the problem. Once the proper engine RPM is verified, conduct a quick scan of the engine instrument cluster to ensure that all readings appear normal. This includes the engine oil temperature, engine oil pressure, and fuel pressure. All that is needed is just to quickly verify that the indicators are in the normal operating range and stable, generally pointing straight up. Once verified, the callout is engine instruments in the green. Again, any observed abnormality should result in immediate aborted takeoff to investigate the cause. As the aircraft accelerates, the next item to check for will be a movement of the airspeed indicator from its vertical resting point. When movement is first noted, the callout airspeed alive confirms that the pitot system is functioning. This should happen fairly early on in the takeoff roll. Any unusual delay in the airspeed indicator movement is cause for concern and may require the takeoff to be terminated. Was the pitot cover left on? Is moisture in the pitot system affecting proper operation? When the indicated airspeed reaches 40 knots, a cross check is made of the analog airspeed with the digital airspeed readout on the Aspen primary flight display. We want to ensure both indicated airspeeds are in reasonable agreement. The callout is 40 knots cross-checked. The aircraft should be rotated at 55 knots indicated airspeed to achieve the proper climb attitude for VY or 79 knots at gross weight at sea level. Rotation should be positive and consistent without being too aggressive. One problem I frequently see with pilots is a rotation rate that is too slow. In the Cherokee, the climb attitude associated with VY is about 7.5 degrees, which corresponds to the third white line on the pitch scale of the primary flight display as shown here. A typical pitch rate during rotation should be about 2 to 3 degrees per second. This means that it should take approximately 3 seconds to rotate the aircraft from level to climb. Because many factors can affect the actual pitch attitude for VY, slight adjustments should be made to maintain 79 knots indicated airspeed once the climb is established. While the Aspen primary flight display is a good aid in establishing the initial attitude, it is important that the pilot be able to use visual cues to maintain the proper pitch attitude for the climb. 
After the aircraft is safely airborne on a VFR departure that does not include an ATC assigned heading, the aircraft's heading should be adjusted and a wind correction angle established that will keep the airplane's track along the extended runway centerline. The use of the track diamond displayed on the Aspen's navigation display is an excellent resource for determining a suitable wind correction angle. Use of the track diamond will be discussed in a later presentation. Throughout the climb, the pilot should expect a left yawing tendency that will need to be corrected by proper and consistent application of right rudder. Occasional reference to the ball on the turn coordinator or the skid indicator at the top of the Aspen primary flight display should be made to ensure that the plane remains in coordinated flight throughout the climb. At 500 feet AGL, the flaps are retracted and climb power is verified. If the red bug on the analog altimeter was set to field elevation prior to takeoff, 500 AGL would be indicated by the green bug, as shown here. When the flaps are retracted, the pilot should anticipate a nose-down pitching moment that will need to be corrected with additional pitch input. The aircraft will then most likely need to be retrimmed. The PA-28 uses full throttle for climb and is a good practice to recheck that all engine instruments are in the green. Climb RPM should be at or near 2700 RPM but not exceeding redline. At 1000 feet AGL noted by the red altimeter bug, the pitch attitude is reduced from initial climb attitude to about 5 or 6 degrees for the cruise climb. This will allow better forward visibility in the climb, better engine cooling, and a faster ground speed. The electric fuel pump should be turned off and the fuel pressure checked. When time and altitude permit, the after takeoff checklist should be completed. That completes the normal takeoff and climb discussion. Now let's head out to the airplane and see how it's performed. Approach area looks clear. Black of traffic, Cherokee 2897 Mike, departing runway 27, straight out departure, Palatka. Flap set 10, mixture rich. Fuel pump on, landing light on, strobes are on, transponder set 1200. Check the approach area again, we're clear. right crosswind today. Alignment check, 270, 270, agrees with the runway 27. Good to go. Static RPM is checked, engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed's alive. 40 knots cross checked. Five, rotate. Turn slightly right to track the extended runway center line. Five hundred feet AGL, flaps retracted. Fine power. Instruments are checked. Traffic is known to 246 is Victor. We are uh, three miles uh, southeast, entering the final for uh, runaway 27. Alaska traffic. Alaska traffic, Cherokee will be departing the uh, pattern on the upwind leg to the west. Last call, Palatka. 1,000 feet AGL, pitch for cruise climb. Traffic, traffic, RB10, is going to be 260 to the right, uh, 360 to the right to avoid the uh, landing traffic. Polaka traffic. 
Electric fuel pump off. Fuel pressure's checked. Four three five Echo Romeo is ten to the northeast inbound for two. After takeoff checklist, power set. Full power engine instruments look in the green. Traffic sky four three five Echo Romeo two thousand feet about eight to northeast. Looking for traffic advisory. Flaps are retracted. Electric fuel pump is off. Pressure's checked. Landing light off. After takeoff checklist is complete. Rocket traffic here two four seven hotel. Be supporting runway.